Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 583. My name is Laura, also you, known as Lala. Sorry, yep. your microphone is still super loud. Can you adjust it at all anymore? Because I can adjust my headphones some. I'm just trying to find a happy medium with this. How about that? The problem is my microphone level moves. So as I talk, it moves up. All right, let me just see how I can make the audio quieter on my end. I can also see it just goes all the way up. That's so weird. All right, walk for me. Hello. Okay, oh, that's so much better, okay. It's gonna move, like it's going up right now as I talk. Well, no, but just uh, like laugh loudly or something. Ah, ha, 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 ha. If I just take one of these out, it won't be so bad. You know, it's me, it's not you, it's just my weird noise thing. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Just if you sorry, could, I wish I could set it. At I know. Level it I know. If there. you can just think about not projecting as much if possible today, okay. I mean, it will mm -hmm. be imperfect. But anyway, all right. Yes, please, please, my friend, start us again. All right. Um, I've lost my flow. You <laughs> oh no! The I've ruined flow. it all. Hello and welcome to the Night Girls. This is episode 583. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. Ah, I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. This is my headband, but that's cool. Um, it is Friday, August 5th. It's your birthday. It is my birthday. Um, I am 42, so I am now the answer to everything. Yes, um, you should be. And Laura and I both use the she, her pronouns. We're recording in separate spaces because my son um, tested positive for COVID on Monday. I think it was Monday. And while I'm still testing negative, I am using an abundance of caution. And- I didn't want to go to your plague house anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just, just wanted to be safe. So um, we'll wait until Kobe's testing negative uh, before we meet up in person again. Yeah, it course, be next week. As soon as, like, I was perfectly fine. As soon as Kobe, you know, was ill and needed me to come pick him up from work and I got home, like, psychologically, my mind's like, you're sick, <laughs> you know? So I got, like, a sore throat <laughs> and all this and, you know, I tested again, but. Anyhow, I'm, I'm shocked it's taken him so long, honestly, to get COVID because he works front desk at a hotel. So he sees people all day, every day. So, um, but he bounced, like he was so ill, he couldn't drive home. And then I got him home, we tested him. He took like a four hour nap and then he bounced back. And now he's been perfectly fine ever since. That's um, awesome. I mean, he's still home he from, know. yeah, he's still home, but, um, oh, to be on. Yep. So, yeah, um, knitting, what are you, what are you working on, friend? Um, I started a new pair of socks. Sorry, I'm, I'm weaving in ends today. Oh my gosh. And if Laura sounds softer to you, it's because I might have, like, I have auditory like sensory issues and because we're recording separately I have to you know have the headphones in and so Laura is naturally projects and I do not and it helps her because she's a teacher she needs to project and so I'm like can you be quiet <laughs> <laughs> and I've been back at work all week yeah so I am extra teachery uh we've had kids for the last two days so I um finished the other socks that I was working on and I'll show you those in a little bit and on Tuesday, I cast on these socks. I wanted something that was a little bit Halloween. What, what um, is that? This, this is not a Halloween colorway. So this is Rock and String Creations. They are out of Kentucky. And this is their Jitterbug Sport in the Meow. Oh, so cats, okay. self-striping that they premiered at SSK um, several, several years ago. And I am knitting it on size ones. And I am almost ready 
for heel increases pretty soon. I think I've got like another inch. So it's giving, I uh, was knitting on it and one of my friends at work was like, is that a Halloween sock? And I was like, it's so close, but cats are kind of Halloween. So it's definitely giving those Halloween vibes for sure. Yeah. I think I have that color too. If I, I think remember. you do as well. So that is living in an owl fat squirrel bag. And it is my travel knitting now. What just fell? Oh, my scissors that I was using to cut ends off of. Um, decided to go jump in with that bag. And so that is the first thing that I'm working on. The second thing that I'm working on is the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. I'm knitting this out of Surrey Alpaca. Um, Silk Lace by Stranded in the Blue Rinse colorway, as well as Fiberhood Neighborhood, Neighborhood Fiber. <laughs> Fiberhood Neighborhood, I like that. Yeah, just renaming folks' businesses for them over here. <laughs> um, what else is new? And the Fair Fight colorway, which is the Stacey Abrams colorway that they did back in 2020, I believe. Maybe 2016. It's been a while. I think it was 2016. So, okay. So it is not quite reading color accurate. Um, yes. I am using studio lights, but it is more purpley blue, I think. It's more blue in person. Mm. I think it's reading kind of navy. It's more purpley blue. Um, so okay. it is to that point where it's divided for under the bust and I'm just going round and round and round. And then I'll pick back up and knit this collar and then some sleeves. And um, yeah, it hasn't, I think I knit like four stitches on it this week. It has not gotten a ton of work, but I did finish two things. So, and this is what the blue rinse by Strainage looks like in that. I, I have fallen in love with Surrey Alpaca Silk Lace. I just, and here's Fair Fight, I just love it. Like it's nice and soft, but also has that mohair type quality, that silk mohair type quality. But um, if you are allergic to mohair, it is a great alternative. And that is living in my Amy F. library bag. So yeah, those are the two things that I'm actively working on right now. What are you working on, friend? Um, mostly the same stuff that I was last week. So um, I'm still working on Shawl That Jazz. Um, I'm a little bit further than I was. I think I was, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half or so, and I'm at about four-ish inches. This is just a garter shawl. Um, and you do essentially short rows, and you have to do it every stitch for something like 100 on each side. So it, it becomes sort of a deep U shape. And then you pick up the stitches and do a ruffle on the, on the edge. Um, but it's very simple. It's just a lot of repetitive garter stitch knitting. So I've knit on that a little bit. Um, and it's on a size nine, which is five and a half millimeter, because I'm using Gyalza by Miss Babs in the, I think it's Summer at the Lake. Um, it was the SSK uh, color for this year. It's a great color. And- I'm gonna steal any leftovers you have. I also have been working a little bit on my Sprinkled with Kindness shawl. This is gonna be, it's a sort of a half wool, half, um, it's written for mohair, but I'm using Surrey Alpaca Lace um, as well from Spotted Circus. So right now it's just in the point where I'm making a long triangle and increasing one stitch every four rows. So slow going, but it's good, mostly mindless knitting. And it's a very lightly, tonally variegated scheme. Um, and then I've got a matching solid gray. Well, it's not solid, it's the same color, it's just, by the same dyer, it's just in the um, alpaca, Surrey alpaca. Yeah, it's on lace. a different base. And those are living in my fat squirrel. Oh, I like that bag. Lady spaces. 
Um, and then the other thing, which is sort of a work in progress, sort of a finished object, um, Steph Gordon, Gorin of Loop, when I knit that sweater earlier this year and it just didn't end up working out for me, she asked if she could use it as a booth sample and just trade me yarn for it, which I was happy to do. But I also told her if she ever needed samples knit, I would be happy to do that. So we've been talking back and forth and she picked this pattern called Inflorescence and it uses um, Fair Isle, but it, you carry the floats on the right side so it gives it a really impactful um, look. So this is wait and see up here, or these two, I don't know what these two are off the top of my head, but she sent me, you know, four little like mill-in skeins to use because that's all I needed for swatching. So we'll see what she says, if she likes these or if she wants something else. I do like the dark on top of the light better than the light on top of the dark. I think it just pops better yeah I would agree with that so like the top the top one is my favorite I think yeah followed by the third this one yeah yeah so um because it's fair all you have to do it in the round really I mean I suppose you could do it flat but it would be it's not going to give you accurate gauge it would be very difficult um especially in this where you're carrying carrying floats so um I just did it in the round in two pieces and added some extra stitches in on the sides and then just cut it and then ran it through my sewing machine afterwards. You steeped, friend. To Look pin at it you. down. Yeah, I mean, it's just a swatch, so it's not like it's critically important or anything. But um, yeah, it was really, the, the technique was really fun. So I'm glad that I, I gave it a shot. And we'll see what Steph says, whether she likes these colors or if she wants me to try it in something else. Nice. So, that's basically the extent of my crafting this week. So what about you? You said you finished some stuff. You finished socks and something else? I did finish some things. Um, so I finished my test knit for Tiffany Lynn. It is the Scrappy Stash Buster Shell. It will be available, I believe, this coming Wednesday. So like the 9th. So it is all the way down. This is the decrease side. That's the halfway point. I'm, I'm weaving in ends right now because mm. I had around 50 ends to weave in. And I okay. should have woven them in um, using, um, oh, what's that technique that you like to use? Weave in Steven? No, the clutch. Oh, the weft, yeah. Uh, weft, the uh, clasped weft. There you go. It's hard to say, but it's easy to do. <laughs> or the Weed and Stevens, but I waited till the end and just, so it um, is a great pattern for using up bits and bobs for stash busting. And but I mean, it used quite a bit though. Yep. It used um, 1200 yards total, I think. I, I still have to weigh. So I need to block it still and then weigh it. And I used a wide assortment of yarns. I used um, plucky knitter feet in two different colorways, soda fountain and something bubbles, tiny bubbles. And then um, Tiny Button Studio and from Regions Beyond, which is a great color. And then Sheep Graffiti and Tranquility and Counts as a Blaze and Adrenaline Rush. And then Undercover Otter, there's only a smidge of it in here. It's a really cool purple in a color called There Is Only Zool. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's gonna, I knit a shawl that's a similar shape for her this past spring and I wore it all the time. Um, it's really nice to, she's been doing a lot of doubled stuff lately and um, it's nice to give some love to stuff that um, might've been gifts. Uh, two of these were gifts or, um, things that have been marinating in the stash for a long time, like the plucky knitter. Um, so only the newish, the newest thing was Teeny Button Studio and that was from last Halloween. So it was great to move some skeins that I love 
out, but um, also the moral kind of gives some stuff new life. Yeah, so, I like being able to double things. It gives you more options. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that is the first thing that I finished and it still needs to be blocked. So I think it's going to grow and become even more drapey, <laughs> but I just, I love it. Do you have a surface large enough for it yeah, to grow? Yeah, I have a guest room bed. That's going to be the problem though when I um, go to block the even star, if I ever do. Like Michael made you a blocking frame when you did yours. Um, I do not have a surface, any kind of surface large enough for that. So I'll probably end up putting down a couple of bed sheets on the floor mm -hmm. in the living room on the carpets and then um, kicking Pearl out for however long. That It'll takes. dry super quickly because I remember when I was pinning, like stringing mine out, um, I had to keep re-wetting it because it's it's so thin, like the yeah. yarn is so thin. It'll. Um, and also, I'm going to need you to help me with it because whenever I get to that point, you know, it's been like four years now um, because I am terrible at gauging like what is circular. So. Yeah, well, we could just get Michael to rebuild the blocking frame. It was a pretty quick thing. <laughs> yeah, we might. And then the other thing, which still needs the ends woven in, um, is the nomadic yarns, socks, and the gumdrop buttons colorway. I had so many meetings on Monday for work. I knit an entire sock in one day. Wow. It's staff meetings. You, do so. you have... Um, I imagine you always have new teachers. Do, do you get the questions of what are you knitting? Yes. And can you knit me this? Yes. So I'm not teacher, patient enough to knit. Well, not that, but a teacher who's been working with me for a couple of years was like, I really want a horn lake cat. Can you do like a maroon and gray hat for me? So I'm gonna, I like her and I've worked with her for a couple of years. So um, and she brings me diet Dr. Pepper. And hats um, can brought, be pretty quick, like you can yeah. use it worsted and stripe yeah. it and absolutely um for me they are very quick but um yeah and if I have stuff in the stash yeah that is also a great way to move out stash or um just yeah I'm looking around like what do I have I also <laughs> just realized I have another pair of socks in here that also need ends woven in on hmm. um it's not it's not really cold enough for socks here I did wear some the other day um with dress pants yesterday to work but it is still in the upper 90s here so wool sock weather is not quite upon us but I will be ready when it is for sure and maybe the next pair after nope I'm gonna do Halloween I was gonna say maybe I'll start my Christmas pairs early but I'm not going to I'm gonna do my Halloween pairs because I want a Halloween box of socks how many pairs are you <clears throat> attempting this year? Um, I would like to do at least, I don't know, what, four this year? Jeez. We'll see. I say that, but I have lots of sweaters and another test knit that I want to make. I also want to make a Halloween sweater. I want to come so, over and, like, clean out the sock machine because I've got some things I want to crank. I mean, the sock machine is... Like nothing's on it, but no. But I mean, like clean it and like yeah, like oh, you can do that anytime you want. You can uh, take it to your house if you would like, <laughs> um, and get Michael to clean it really well. Well, you have compressed. You, yeah, you have like a. It's not a compressed air thing. Like it is. It's compressed air, but it's not in a can. It's like there's an air compressor, and it's yeah. Michael's run tubing throughout the house so that either from his office or from the server room, or I think it's one other place, you can jack into that compressed air. So it's not bad for the environment the way that like canned air is bad for the yeah. environment. It's so. amazing to me, but um, yeah, it really just needs to be cleaned super well. And yeah. I'm not willing to spend the time to do that, but we'll see. I'm planning on going to some high school football games again this year if weather is not too aggressively hot. So that is, once football season starts. Um, You'll always need like is, a sock to knit on. 
Yeah, that is good knitting time in general. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I have finished this week. Have you finished anything this week? I have not. Um, okay. I did start spinning on my hip string. That's a liar. You finished a dress this week. You're a liar. Oh, yeah, but it's in the dirty clothes. Okay. I'll, I'll take some pictures for next week's show. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I Leslie sewed, sewed the an Charlie Captain. Yeah, in like a day. <laughs> um, it was last Saturday and I was so I, you know, we come back from SSK and there's a woman at SSK named Sarah who wore the Charlie Caftan in 2019 and I really liked it and had put it on my list to sew, but the sizing hadn't gone up to where I needed it to. But in the meantime, she updated the sizing, so added some sizes and- um, The designer did. The designer, yes, not Sarah. Yeah. Uh, so I used my fancy projector and cut out pattern pieces and spent way too long on um, arranging uh, was it called puckers, not puckers, um, gathers, which apparently there's a much easier way to do it with a piece of elastic um, that nobody told me about until after the fact. To be fair, I didn't ask anybody. Uh, but yeah, so I did that. But I did start spinning some of my uh, fiber from hip strings in their um, haunted colorway. And I got two braids of Haunted and two braids of Pros in like both of those. the Merino Silk um, blend. And they're similar-ish. They're not the same colors, but they're similar-ish. So I'm going to spin, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to spin singles of both eight ounces and then ply them together and just see what I get. So Ooh, you'll get a pound. I will. I can do that now. That's probably enough to do a short sleeve sweater. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not putting any expectations on myself. I am spinning it thinner than I typically do, but um, I'm not putting any expectations on myself. But it's just on a bobbin, so I didn't bring it up. What about you? I gotcha. Um, I've not been spinning a ton since SSK. I do have um, some SSK stash that I am spinning in the other room. Um, the ladies from Madison gave us a lovely gift bag yes. and um, it was so well thought out and it was lots of Wisconsin type things like cheese curds. They had a cute coaster made and there was this um, mini skein of sock yarn from a friend's that dyes yeah. and then that same French dyes fiber. Yep. So um, I started spinning that braid of fiber. So it's not even the first half is done and I'm going to spin that fractally but in the meantime and here last week I had a couple of zooms so I had a zoom for um Jillian Marino's Patreon which if you are interested in spinning it all I highly recommend Jillian's Patreon and then um I did the Daedalus zoom because I was I love the people from the Daedalus group they're super nice so I was able to spin the second half of something that I started pre-SSK. This is Oberon by Into the World. It is also a merino silk. And it was the July 21 Club. Um, I would love it if they bring this back. I think it's super pretty, those greens and blues. Um, and like a year after the club's released, Chris and James will bring back colorways. Mm -hmm. So I really like this one. I need to send them an email and say, hey, eventually you should bring that you should dye that again because it is super pretty um so that is the only thing that I've spun singles on I do need to fly a little bit this weekend because I have things like the cabbages and kings by angle nook um all the way done and it just needs to be applied and then the after I finished that I picked up again forest ride which is a gradient pack by Angle Nook Fibers, and I have the last three colors here. So a lot of greens and browns in the last three colors, but it starts off with like a bright red and a bright blue. It's based on an image of the teams riding through the forest. 
um, for the Tour de France. And so I am spinning this and um, I'm just doing a two ply. I'm not being as consistent as I like to be. And part of that is the base. So it is a Shetland humbug base. So when you look at this, you can see like the darker browns. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a brown base that is dyed over. So it's got a little bit less, um, it's a little bit more muted than like a white base would be. Right. But when you look at this, you can kind of see that shimmer is silk. And so there's streaks of silk mm -hmm. around it. So it's not, it's a test, I believe. So it's not super well blended and it's not drafting. Right, so you'll get big glops of silk. Yeah, quite as smooth as that. So when I go to draft this, it's not drafting quite as smooth. And that's not the fault of the dyer. The Ingle Nook Nuns do such a fabulous job. It is just the nature of the blending of this base. And I've also spun this base from multiple people, um, the Shetland, silk and with the tessa and it's the same throughout so while it's not going to be the most consistent spin i've ever done um it is going to be one of the most gorgeous spins that yeah I've ever no done. i i coveted the first <clears throat> like i don't know braid and a half or two braids that you ply spun and plied you know it's very dark but it's very lovely i would happily steal it Oh, I think you're thinking the dark and stormy gradient. Oh, maybe I am. That's another Ingle Nook one though, right? <laughs> it is, yeah. yes. I have like six of the Ingle Nook gradient packs. And um, one of my goals for this fall is to stop hoarding them a little bit and um, spin, them, spin them up because a lot of them are around 12 ounces. And I think they would be delightful like rocket tees which is a pattern that I tried on in the SSK um, try it on room this year and really, really enjoyed. And I think would look, um, so one of the things this year, I have a new principal and she has brought back um, a dress code for teachers and students, um, which is great, but because it makes it easier for me to know what to wear in some ways, like, I have to, if I wear a dress, it has to come to my knees. You know, it just makes it, there's rules. And sometimes I like rules. Um, I'm that person. And she did tell me I could wear my overalls on Friday, but I have to wear like a nicer shirt with it. I'm wearing my nicer universal design, universal standard shirt right now. Um, and when people wear jeans on Fridays, so if I decide to wear jeans, we're supposed to wear it with like a blouse or a sweater, um, a nicer top. So um, these gradient packs won't be like, hey, I'm mixing stripes with a pattern, but they'll be gradients. So I can do some rocket cheese. Or wear them with jeans. Or wear them with skirts, because I do have some knee length skirts. So I'm kind of, um, and I'm gonna make Leslie send me some more skirts because I saw Amy Bess at SSK and I love her like, three seam skirts that she was wearing. Oh, I think, yeah, I think she's peppermint something. I forget what it was, I'll have to ask her. And they have pockets, I think. Yeah. I'm all about the pockets. So, um, and I can get you to make them so that they actually <laughs> go long enough for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I am kind of adding to my handmade wardrobe to wear with overalls, basically. <laughs> But yeah, um, so that is what I have been spinning. I haven't done a ton of reading. I'm still listening to my audiobook, which expires in two days. So this weekend I have to finish it. Um, and I also read a picture book called The World Belongs to Us by Jacqueline Woodson. And it is basically a love poem to Brooklyn in the 1970s and 80s after school lets out. So like opening the fire hydrant and getting a can and right. making it into like a blast cannon or and running through and getting your hair all wet, not coming home till the street lights come yep. on. Um, so for me, it was very nostalgic, but also um, 
it's just a lovely, lovely, it's basically a love letter to, um, in poetry form to Brooklyn and the 1980s. Because while I didn't grow up in a city in the 1980s um, or 70s, like there's a lot of shared experiences there. And Jacqueline Woodson is amazing. She writes um, middle grade, YA, and picture books. And I've never read a book of hers that I did not like. So I highly recommend her stuff. So that is what I have been reading. What have you been reading, friend? Um, I started a book called Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Nero. Um, everything that we talk about is linked in our show notes. And our show notes are found on our website, which is the knit girls with three ls.com. Um, so it's about, um, it's sort of a historical fantasy and it's about children that have talents and special abilities. Um, one of them can heal any wound. Another of them glows blue for some reason. I'm not far enough in the book to know why that's like a talent, but um, it's interesting. I'm only about 30% through with the book, but the part that I'm on feels more like, you know, a final battle. So I'm curious how the book's going to go. It's got rave reviews. It's pretty new. Um, so I've been, I've been reading that and then I'm still listening to Raya Re Revelations, which is by Michael Sullivan, narrated by Tim Gerard Reynolds, who's an amazing narrator. I'm on the second book in that series, which is Rise of Empire. Um, and then Maintenance Phase put out two new episodes this week, one oh. on Patreon and one on, um, you know, just their normal channels. So that got, always makes you happy. I got a lot of Aubrey, like, capital laughter this week. And that, that <laughs> like, feeds my soul. So good. Yep. Um, for favorite things, I don't really have anything. Mostly my favorite things have just been napping. I have a thank you. My house looks like a box fort right now. Because yes, it of, does. <laughs> because of all the lovely books you all have donated. Either you saw my post or Jude's post or um, there were some other people that posted about it. Um, and we talked Sarah, about it last week. And we talked about it on the show last week. And it is just overwhelming how amazing you all are. And The World Belonged to Us was actually a book that was bought through um, the, you know, my Amazon wish list. And I shared it with a teacher today and she's going to use it when she does her poetry unit. So I really, really, um, and my kids go and read books to the local elementary school and they'll take that to read. Yeah. So I really, really appreciate y'all. You're amazing. Thank you so much. My kids appreciate you too. They've been coming in, even though they've only been back at school for two days, to check and see what new things are there. And I did my first book checkouts today. So wow. Yep. Already. Already. So very, very cool. But I think that's it. I'm trying to think of anything else. We have a Patreon event. Yep, tomorrow, which may tomorrow. be before this even goes up. Yep. Um, and you can find our Patreon, which is also linked on the show the notes, where mm -hmm. you can go to Patreon and type in the Knit Girls with three L's, and you can find us there. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think so. Um, hopefully, we'll have mm -hmm. some more interesting things to talk about next week as well. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll have another finished object I don't know what that would be yeah I definitely won't but I'll have passed on my um flax from camellia for the blue oh, cool. top so but maybe I'll have some finished spinning we'll see oh yeah maybe I'll have some spinning all right well you all have a good one happy birthday Leslie enjoy Thank your you. cookies um, um Pearl and I sent Leslie cookies earlier yes from crumbles yes. They're so big, I have to cut them in half. And I love I my sweets, so that's saying something. You can put them in the fridge and hide them from the boys. There's no hiding from them. No. <laughs> yeah. 
Give them the banana bread one. Yes. <laughs> and you, and you I like banana bread. bread. I know you do. That's why I got that one. The hardest thing of today, my hardest activity was picking out cookie flavors for Leslie. <laughs> so I had to make sure there were no nuts. Yeah. And I, I was like, I don't know. Should I get, does she like mint? I think she likes mint. Leslie also doesn't like coffee flavored things. Mm-hmm. So there's a mint brownie. I think there's two of the mint brownie ones because that sounded delightful and cool and it's very hot outside and humid yeah pearl has been grumpy because it's been raining mm-hmm. oh and i had a new brother drum carter gifted to me by the folks at brother so i will be doing some instagram lives and sharing some stuff that i make on that with y'all and it's cool. so that's kind of fun um well yeah you guys have an awesome week and um we'll talk to you next week bye y'all, bye, y'all.